Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I am very super excited to be able to talk about Persona 5 Strikers today, under preview ahead of its release later on in February. I am limited to only talking about and showing the first small part of the game, but what I can say is that immediately and just off this first part of it, I absolutely love my time with it. In fact, this might just be my favourite Warriors game of all, and when you consider the context that I have played dozens of Warriors games now, it is a favourite genre of mine, that should give you an indication of just how much I've been drawn into this thing already. The reason being is that Persona 5 Strikers is just so different, and much more so than I was actually expecting it would be. I went in not knowing too much about it other than it was coming out, but I was expecting something a little like Hyrule Warriors or Dragon Quest Heroes, where Koei Tecmo would do just enough to ensure that the game remained identifiable as the license it was based on, but essentially keep the Warriors core experience to it. And I was prepared to love the game for that because I obviously love Warriors, but so soon after Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, I was expecting something that was going to come across as much more familiar than it probably deserved to be in isolation. It's not though. Persona 5 Strikers is really, really not the standard Warriors game. It's no exaggeration to say that this here game is the most different we've actually seen Koei be with the Warriors property, and it's kind of tantalizing in terms of what it implies for the future of the series. So basically, rather than being a Warriors game with a Persona coat of paint, this game feels like a Persona's game from top to bottom. The only difference between it and Persona 1 through 5 is that rather than combat being turn-based, every time that you fight an enemy in Strikers, they turn into a small horde of enemies that you take down with a Warriors-like combat system. But between those battles, you do all the things that you would do in a normal Persona game. You stalk around dungeons, you try to catch enemies unaware to get a bonus on them before the battle starts, and, as is appropriate to Persona 4, you also do a lot of navigation by doing thief-like things like clambering around walls and sneaking from hiding spot to hiding spot. It is an eclectic mix of gameplay styles, and at first it doesn't feel like it should work. So the first hour or so that I was playing, it just didn't feel like it was going to gel with me. However, it does, and if anything, it makes for a more speedy, free-flowing, fluid experience than the actual Persona games. You still get all the mechanical features of Persona, you collect new Personas by defeating enemies, and you can use them in battle for their special abilities. You can then fuse them together to make new Persona, which bring with them new abilities and strengths. This has been repurposed to work in an action context, but it does feel remarkably authentic, and Koei has done a very studied job to understand the appeal of Persona to the nth degree and make sure that their game actually reflects all of that, so that when people play it, they feel like they're playing something true to Persona rather than a spin-off game with the Warriors license over the top of it. There is even that same line drawn between the dungeons and the real world that we see in Persona 3, 4 and 5 in Persona 5 Strikers. So, in the real world sections, you'll get to wander around without having to fight enemies, you'll build relationships with the other characters, and you'll run through a narrative that has the same depth and length of any visual novel out there. Now, there are not quite as many free time activities and side things to fill your day with as there is in Persona 5 proper, but that's okay. The point here is that Koei Tecmo has clearly gone to the effort to understand the real appeal of Persona 5, which is not just the combat and not just the enemies that you fight, but also that relationship and the characters and the dynamic between them and the group, you know, energy. And they've worked really hard to find a way of implementing that into their game it is still very much an action oriented game, and I don't think Koei would want it to be seen as anything else, but there is a greater effort in there to build story than we've seen in a lot of other Warriors games in the past. So, Persona 5 Strikers takes place one year after the events of Persona 5. Don't worry if you haven't played the previous game to completion, as it's not strictly necessary to enjoy what Persona 5 Strikers offers. I know a lot of people out there have been wondering why this game is getting a Nintendo Switch release at all, when Persona 5 itself isn't on the console, but it does work as a self-contained experience, so you can separate the two if you want to, and you can come in completely new and still appreciate what Persona 5 Strikers offers. Being a year older in this game, the various characters from the group have started to break away from their tight-knit group that we saw in Persona 5, 
So events at the start of the game are really just an excuse for the whole crew to get together again. And it is for a summer of a summer break where they've all got some free time. And their first goal is to go on a camping party. Unfortunately, before they can do that, events have dragged them into a new nightmare world and they are called on to use their persona once again. And that's really where the plot picks up in Persona 5 Strikers. Now, what I really love about the first dungeon that you can play through, and once again, this is the only one I can talk about right now, is the way that it riffs on Alice in Wonderland. Persona 5 Strikers is by no means the first JRPG to be inspired by Wonderland. It's actually quite a common trope. But the aesthetics of Alice in Wonderland and that kind of freeform creativity gels really nicely with Persona's highly saturated use of colour to make something that is really pleasant on the eye. This is a game that is very much about art direction rather than technical brilliance. So while the individual character models, especially in the dungeons, don't look particularly detailed, the art and the environments are quite bland when you look at them in isolation. The actual art direction and the way it all comes together in a really cohesive and very highly creative way is really visually impressive on the eyes. And like I said, the characters are all very much themselves, and Persona 5 Strikers feels like it is a genuine sequel for people who have played the original because of that. Yusuke is still the most dryly funny pervert artist that we've ever seen in a video game, and still gorgeous on every level, and Makoto is still the most utterly boring and irritating character in the entire Persona series. Now, I know that I'm going to get thumbs down for that, but it is a hill I'm willing to die on. Makoto is terrible. Seriously though, Persona has always been a series about the characters and the relationships between them first and foremost, to the point that the games have almost felt like the combat and JRPG stuff is really seen as an imposition by the development team, and they didn't really want to deal with it, but they felt like they had to because they were making a JRPG rather than a visual novel. Persona 5 Strikers is a little more gameplay orientated, but they haven't lost sight, again, like I mentioned before, of the importance of narrative characters and the relationship between them. For all of that, I don't universally love this game. I very much love it overall, as to me it represents the most experimental, original and interesting Warriors game we've seen in quite some time. But as with all things that are experimental, by nature there are parts of it that doesn't work. It can be very hard to make out what's actually happening in the heat of a melee. The combat system itself is snappy and dynamic and fluid and interesting and a lot of fun to play around with, really. Uh, and it is full of flashing colours and movement, which is very visually impressive, but it does make it far too easy to lose sight of your character, let alone what they're actually trying to do in the heat of the battle. The game's solution is to use magic to slow things down. So when you're using a persona to cast a spell, the time stops, the combat actually stops moving allowing you to position where you would like to cast that spell before restarting things with the spell being cast. The problem here is that you're going to actually want to do that a lot, for no other reason sometimes than just to collect your bearings, and unfortunately the characters don't have many magic points to do that. So you can't spam the magic as much as you'd like to, simply because they run out of magic points and then you need to retreat back to base to recover. It can also be difficult to make out individual types of enemies in the melee, so just like in Persona 5, it's really important to hit enemies with abilities that they're weak to, but aside from the major enemies and bosses, it can be really hard to puzzle out exactly which spells you want to use for the situation because it can be hard to see exactly what you're fighting against. Outside of combat, I have a couple of small issues as well. I'm really unhappy with the lack of time management that's in the game. So, for people who have played Persona games in the past, you would know that if you leave the dungeon, that's it for the day, and the calendar will tick over a day before you can take a second crack at that dungeon. That was a neat feature in Persona, because it actually gave you a time limit to work to, and it made you really consider each move that you were making, whether you wanted to go into the dungeon that time, whether you wanted to get something else done that might have helped you in the dungeon, and so on and so forth. And you needed to plan out the, your use of time quite clearly because you couldn't get everything done that was available to you. It was a really neat feature because you had such a limited number of days to do things and if you wasted time you'd be in a lot of trouble but on the other hand if you used your time really well and cleared the dungeon quite quickly you'd have this huge bonus surplus of time with which to go on dates with various characters and really kind of just enjoy your time in the game. 
So for me, it was always Ann, but for other people, I don't know. Might be somebody else, maybe even Makoto, but yeah, Ann was always the one that I would spend my surplus days with as such. There is one final issue, and it is a small one perhaps in the grand scheme of things, but for me, it is quite a big deal. The game uses Persona 5 rather than Persona 5 Royal as the basis. This manifests itself most significantly in the fact that the gorgeous gymnast girl Kasumi is not in Strikers at all. This really is disappointing to me because I love Kasuni, perhaps even more than Anne, or perhaps I love them equally and would like to see them hook up. And, and But the point is that Kasumi not being part of Striker's roster is disappointing. Koei Tecmo has instead inserted their own character, Sophie, who is an AI that can manifest as a real girl in the dungeons. I do like her design, generally, because she has twin tails shaped like hearts and who can't love that. But the character that she is is quite dull, and written in a way that she doesn't really feel like she's part of the rest of the group. It's quite obvious that she's not from Persona as such. She's a Koei Tecmo insert into Persona 5 Strikers. But those niggles are in no way enough to dampen my enthusiasm for the overall game. I love Strikers. It is going to be one of my favourite games of the year. And I say that with complete confidence just two weeks into the year. It is just a me kind of game and it just resonates with me on a very powerful level. So I'm pretty sure even though 2021 is shaping up to be a pretty good year for video games, this one is still going to be, at the end of the year, one of my favourites. What's more, it is really exciting for what it means for the broader Warriors property and its future. For years, people have been working under the assumption that Warriors as a gameplay formula is static and every game that uses it is functionally the same. Some of those games may well be excellent, like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity from a few months ago, but it is still the Warriors game underneath, and you scratch underneath the surface, and what you've got is a very similar system to the other Warriors games that have come in the years before. What Strikers shows is that Koei actually has a lot of creative wriggle room, and Warriors can be applied to actual JRPG systems that are in every way a JRPG. They just use the combat system as their combat system. Assuming that Strikers resonates and fans enjoy it, Who's to say where this stops? Could we see that Dead or Alive RPG that has a combat system like this? The, I, that's something I've been asking for for years and hoping for, that Koei would take Dead or Alive and try and do something a little bit more narrative with it. And I could see it working as a warrior style game. Or to give voice to the elephant in the room, Koei has already worked with Square Enix and Dragon Quest heroes. So they obviously have some kind of relationship. And after seeing what Strikers offers, a bona fide Final Fantasy game using the Warriors engine is not only possible, but I would be incredibly disappointed if it doesn't now happen. And on that note, now is a good time to give this video a wrap, I think. Thanks as always for tuning in, and I hope this does give you a sense of what to look forward to from the full game. You can expect that we will have a review live closer to release on digitallydownloaded.net, uh, one's embargo lifts of course, but in the meantime please do hit me up with any questions you have. As long as it relates to the small section that I can talk about in previous stage, I will be most happy to answer it. If you do like my videos, please do hit the like and subscribe button. Also, there is a little bell that you can click on too. If you mash that, you'll get notifications emailed to you whenever I do streams or upload new videos. As you may or may not have noticed, I do a lot of them, so that'll help you to not miss anything that I do cover. Also, please do consider backing me on Patreon if you enjoy my videos. Even a dollar a month goes a long way to help me to continue to grow what I'm doing with this channel and make even more in-depth videos that look at games from an artsy perspective and really you know, go out there and champion indie and Japanese games in particular. Thanks again everybody for watching this. I hope it was interesting. Have a great day and we'll see you at the next video.